This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hello, welcome to Out of the Comfort Zone. I'm your host, R.B. Kelly. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, OC16 Television. And I'm really excited. We've got a cool guest today and cool tips. But first, our book of the week. Now, this is Spy the Lie. This was written by ex-CIA officers who um, tell when people are lying to them, all right? If someone is saying, hey, you know, I totally am an asset for the United States, but they're lying and they're secretly working for North Korea, like that would be a good thing to know. And so that's why they wrote this book. Now, most of us don't need to detect foreign spies, but we do need to detect when our kids are lying to us or when our spouse is lying to us or when our boss is lying to us. <laughs> and some studies show you might be told as many as 10 lies a day. Some studies show you might be told as many as 200 lies a day. So being able to tell when people are lying to you or when you're, they're telling the truth, that would be really important. And that is Spy the Lie. You can find this online, Amazon, eBay, anywhere you find books. It's a really cool book. It's one of my favorites. I've read it like four times. So, Spy the Lie. Now, on to our body language tip of the week. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a really big family. And so when we meet for the holidays, there's all these relatives and extended relatives, and I've forgotten most of their names because there's so many of them. But I have to be like, oh, I totally remember who you are. Welcome. Come on in. And so my trick for being welcoming and, and kind and open for the holidays, even when I don't know who people are, is to practice a real smile. Now, you've seen real smiles like this, and you've seen fake smiles. Have you ever had someone give this fake smile to you? Hi, welcome, it's nice to meet you. I'm so happy to be here. That's a fake smile, and you see it a lot on the holidays. But, you know, that kind of kills your holiday joy. So, instead, you should be giving genuine smiles. Fake, genuine. See the difference? It's all in the wrinkles. Cheeks come up further, you get wrinkles in the outer corners and under the eye. Now, you can't just turn on a genuine smile on command, unless you've practiced, like I have. But if you want to be able to give a genuine smile, you actually have to work out your face. And you do that by taking a pen, pencil, stick, and you stick it in your teeth. And then you flex your cheeks and you pull the cheek muscles back so they're not touching the pen, all right? Ding. And if you do this for long enough, like one, two minutes, you'll feel burning in your cheeks right here. And congratulations, you're working out your face muscles. If you do this often enough, you too will be able to pull out a genuine smile on command. All right, you guys are fun. Okay, so that was our body language tip and our book of the week, but now we are on to our guest. Now this guest is someone that I actually like, that I actually respect, and whose work I actually admire. And there aren't a lot of people like that, so I was very happy when she agreed to come and be our guest today. This is Sarah Paikai. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Thank Harvey. you for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. Such a pleasure to be here. Glad. I'm glad I like here. that smiling tip. I was like smiling from ear to ear when you were giving the tip. I'm going to go home and practice with the pen. And <laughs> it's an awesome skill. Very convenient. See, yeah, but Sarah, yeah. for our viewers, what exactly do you do? So I am a social media strategist, and I help people mostly with content marketing, meaning I help people find the messages and the ideas around their business that really help show their audience what they're about and lead them to their programs and offerings that they have. Ah, so how does Speak Your Word come into that? Speak Your Word was really founded, um, so I'm a part of a social media agency, and we were working with a lot of different clients, both here in Hawaii and in the States, you know, all the way five, six, seven figure businesses and really looking at how to better get them on social media. And I found that even before you start looking at things like Facebook ads or how often should I post or where should I post, people were asking the question, what should I talk about? And what is really something that I could talk about for days on end? Because that's part of social media marketing, right? You always have to be on social. What is something I could talk about and not get bored with? Mm -hmm. and still feel like it's really true to what's happening with me in my business right now. Um, and so as we began to kind of dig deeper under that, I realized a lot of people are afraid to really go there when it comes to controversial topics or things they feel very passionately about. I think there's this fear of who even cares, who would listen, what if I'm judged? Um, and so Speak Your Word was really born from 
the desire to inspire people to feel bold enough to find their true message and to talk about it on social media. I love that. Bold enough to find your true message. Yes. And I've seen, like, well, in my life and in the lives of the people around me, there are times when something is so dear to you that you're just afraid to let it out. <laughs> yes. What if people yes. squish it? Yes. And so finding the courage and the guts to stand up for what you believe in and share what you're passionate mm -hmm. about even knowing people are going to disagree with you, people might come and troll you, that is something you need to do if you're ever going to make a positive change yes. in the world. Yes, it's so interesting that you brought up trolls is because um, I was recently on a live stream with a dear friend of mine. We were doing her um, audiences around moms, and so we were talking about finding the courage to really put yourself out there as a mompreneur, and we actually had these trolls who hopped onto the live stream and there were four of them and they're like, oh, we're here because, you know, we were sent here because of a Craigslist ad and I know that this is an auction for couches. And they were just like hardcore for 20 minutes. They were just, when are you going to auction the couch? And this, you guys are terrible auctioneers and this is the worst couch sale I've ever been to. And we're talking about life and business, kind of like how you and I are today. Um, and I remember like the old me probably would have been so intimidated and I would have felt bad and I would have been ashamed and been like, oh, this is so awkward, I don't know what to do. And this is what happens when you yeah, get out this of is what, Exactly, this is what happens when you get out of your comfort zone, right? And, and what, what should I do? But it was such a great teaching moment and I turned it around and I said, look, this, if this had happened to me two years ago, I probably would have like sat in a corner and cried later. But the power of when you speak your word often and you know what you stand for and you know why you're sharing it, you flex this muscle of your voice to where it was like, this is a great teaching moment, so you see how these trolls are, that's what's going to happen if you put yourself out there, but do it anyway because your message is so important and worth hearing. So that's like a practical example of, of some of the things and, and ways that I like to sh showcase to people. Social media can be really used for what you're passionate about in life. And I know a lot of our viewers are probably thinking, oh gosh, social media, that thing that my kids are on all the time. Like, why on earth would I want to be on social media? <laughs> Do you have anything you'd like to say to them? Um, yeah, it's not for everybody. I'll start with that. So if, it, if it's not comfortable and it's not where you want to share your business, that's totally fine. You know, um, I will say, though, that social media and our phones have replaced so much of how we consume information nowadays, right? Like, it used to just be you had a telephone in your wall and a TV with a couple of stations and, and a, you know, um, you got your newspaper. But people are getting information really, really quickly. And so if you're trying to reach those types of people who have fast-paced lives, who live in their phone, social media is a perfect tool to put your message out there so that people can see it. The best part of marketing or the best marketers meet people where they are. And so if your audience is on social media and your potential clients are on social media, I say it's the best platform. Plus, it's free for the most part, right? I mean, 90% of it things, is free. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you for that. Now, I love this dichotomy of where you were two years ago versus where you were now. Mm -hmm. And I felt that feeling before where if someone criticizes your work or they tell you you're not doing things right, it just kind of crushes you. But I love that you've come on this journey where you're able to just kind of like brush them off and say, too bad, so sad. I know what <laughs> yeah. I'm here for. I know what I'm doing and I'm going to keep speaking. So how did how did that journey happen for you? It was a really long journey. Um, you know, the funniest thing is, honestly, the biggest thing for me was just having somebody to look up to, watching other women entrepreneurs who are really putting themselves out there and having them turn around and look at me and say, your message is just as powerful as what I'm doing. Like, I see you and the work that you're wanting to put into the world, and it's powerful. And just having somebody recognize that in me was so life-changing in the way that I felt empowered to put myself out there. And so when I founded Speak Your Word, a lot of it was I would just love to be that for somebody. You know, it's kind of like my give back to tell other women, no matter how you were brought up or what you feel like you're not enough or societal expectations or all of these things that are out there nowadays in mainstream, mainstream media, you know, you're enough and we see you and keep going because the work that you're doing is phenomenal. I love that so much. And that's something I've seen for me. Like growing up, it seems like with all the media, it tells you you should be this. Like cookie yes. cutter. This is exactly what you're supposed to be like. You're supposed to be like everybody else. And if you get out of these lines, too bad. Like you're over. You're wrong. But I remember for me, watching you and watching other people in my life who 
break out of that box and get out of that circle and don't apologize for being their best self. <laughs> yes. That's something that's always given me the courage to reach for my best self mm -hmm. and to grow a little more and to do a little more. And so I'm so glad that you're standing on this platform and leading the way for people. Thank you. Yeah, I think that the biggest thing is when you're getting out of your comfort zone, right? When you're getting out of that box, it's like the fear of the unknown is so overwhelming. And I think sometimes when you just see other people doing what it is that you're aspiring to do and seeing that they're successful, it like sparks that courage in you to say, okay, I'm not gonna die, right? This fear is not gonna overwhelm me. It's not gonna be too much. It's not gonna be so terrible that I can't continue. Maybe this is worth the risk. And you kind of extend outside of the comfort zone just a little bit more and a little bit more until you become very strong and it becomes a natural thing, right? Then you get trolls and you're like, oh, ha, 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 that's such a funny story. I'm gonna go and tell this to somebody. Um, whereas before, I feel like I would have spent a lot of time just feeling very insecure. Like, was it enough and should I? You know, all those questions, the way that we, we double doubt ourselves and we backpedal and all of these things, so yeah. And I know your business is specifically targeting women who are entrepreneurs and yes. I feel like that's your business, but outside of that, there are so many people who oh, suffer yes. from this. Yes, yes. Is this something that our male viewers are going to be dealing with as well? Yes, it's interestingly enough. Um, so mostly my clients are, are women, but a few brave men <laughs> have also joined in, um, and it's phenomenal. Just I think sometimes to hear what is so great about you repeated back to you. And that's what I do with my clients. They'll come in, they'll tell me, here's all of my ideas and here's what I aspire to and I don't know if this will work. And I'll say, well, this part and this part and this part is really impactful. Now let me repeat back to you what that sounds like if you post it on social media. And so I'll go through hypotheticals and say, this is what I mean. And they go, oh my gosh, you're so brilliant. I said, no, I'm just repeating back to you what you're telling me. Like, this is what I'm hearing from you. And so no matter the gender, the age, if you're in entrepreneurship, uh, you want to be very, very clear about what it is that you stand for and what it is that you want people to know about you and your business, because it changes the experience of your customers by tenfold when you're clear and you're putting it out there and they're hearing it and they're receiving it, it lets them already start to begin to participate with you before the sale even happens, which makes the sale so much easier. Like you're the sales expert, right? You know, like if somebody comes in and they already know about you and they like you, it's so much easier to have that, that conversation. And I feel like this also applies to our viewers who aren't entrepreneurs. Even if you don't run your own business, there are still things that you stand for, mm -hmm. causes you're passionate about, and things you believe in things you believe in. Yes, yes and there's still that that deep part of you that a lot of us like to hide in layers and pretend oh yeah I'm just like everybody else mm -hmm. you can't see the true me back <laughs> here but when you can break out of that shell and be yourself speak your your true word whether that's on social media whether that's out with your family with your friends in your workplace I feel like that's so much more powerful than the idea of all these little cookie cutters that exactly fit in the way the world wants us to for sure, yes, that's how movements are born and that's how society is built. Like by us not, the flip side of it, right? By us not saying anything, that's still setting precedence for a trend or a movement or what is a societal norm. So, you know, whether we use our voices or not, collectively together as a community, we're deciding the direction of things. And so why not speak up for what you believe in, right? You, you're more likely to influence what's happening for the better and more in alignment with with where you stand in your principles. So and that's my theory. Speak, <laughs> speak up for that. Because yes. when you're silent, you're just letting the loudest voices win. Yes, the loudest tantrum ends up winning. <laughs> exactly. Now we are gonna take a short break, but we will be right back. So stay on this channel and we'll see you in a minute. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha.
Welcome back. We missed you. You're on OC16 Television, Think Tech Hawaii. This is Out of the Comfort Zone, and I'm your host, R.B. Kelly, here with my guest, Sarah Paikai, the founder and CEO of Speak Your Word. Yes. Now, we've been having a lot of fun here today, so I'm glad you're back. But I wanted to ask you about some of the challenges that your, your audience faces mm -hmm. when it comes to trying to get out of their comfort zone, trying to speak their word. Mm -hmm. I know um, like something my family is going through, one of my sisters is dealing with where she just, she feels like she's kind of constrained herself into be the person like she ought to be for her oh, family, yes, for her husband, yes. you know, not to make waves. So what would you tell her in order to speak her word? Before I think even speaking your word, it's really important to get back to how you're actually feeling about the subject. And I know that sounds really simple. It seems like, duh, of course I know how I feel about the subject. It's me and I'm thinking about it, right? But um, speak your word, the name itself came about because it's speak your word, not the words that you've heard your whole life, not what you feel like you're supposed to, not what society is telling you, but like what is really your thing. And so part of that is going back to what is it that I'm passionate about? What is it that makes me happy? What is it that motivates me? And you know, when you have a family and whether you're, you know, you're male or female, if you have children, if you have a spouse, there's a lot of responsibility that gets added on. And I think sometimes we begin to lose ourselves just a little bit in, in very small pieces until the point when somebody says, well, what do you think about this? And I, I, I went through this myself, I say, well, my husband thinks this, this, and this. And well, I think this way because I would like my children to understand that this, this, and this, right? But going back to what is it that Sarah really thinks about it? How does Sarah really feel about it? And so the first thing that I have everybody start with is, when you're thinking about topics or trying to make decisions or you're trying to know what your opinion is, being quiet and still within yourself, being honest with yourself and brave enough sometimes to be honest that this is how I actually feel about this subject. And I think sometimes that surprises us. Well, it does for me. I'll, I'll be introspective and I'll really look into something and go, oh, I'm actually not okay with that. <laughs> and I'm sure you see this all the time with body language, right? Yes. People who are saying, no, I'm not okay with that, but their body language is saying, like, I don't really care, just whatever, right? It's like you teach people how to make sure that their body lines up with what it is that their intention is. Um, and I think part of that is really just knowing what is your true intention, though? I love that. I've actually seen this with myself if I'm having to make a difficult decision or if I'm talking to someone and I'm not thinking like how I actively feel, I've sometimes noticed that I'll be like, oh yeah, that's fine with me, when my body language is like, no, it's not fine. <laughs> and so I have began to use my body language as kind of a gauge of like, no, how do I really feel? I love if I'm that. talking to someone and I see a bit of contempt or dislike or disgust on my face, I'm like, whoa, subconsciously, I am not okay with what's going mm -hmm. on here. And so I've had to sit down and actually think, like you said, okay, What's the root of this? Yes. What do I really feel here? It takes so much courage. It really so much does. courage. Oh my gosh. <laughs> because you're like, if I change my stance on this, what are the ramifications? Like, what else is going to happen if this is not the normal pattern of what I'm always doing? There's like, ah, that overwhelming fear again, right, of being outside of the comfort zone. Outside of the comfort zone. And also, we seem to have this fear of being inconsistent. Like, mm. when I was 15, I decided on this. But now I'm 25, and I still can't change my mind because I'll be inconsistent. But that's so crazy because things change. We change. We grow. Yes. Yes, so we developed into so much more than we were even just two months ago, right? Two years ago, 20 years ago. So being flexible um, in that sense to, to allow yourself, giving yourself permission, give yourself permission to be yourself. And I know that sounds really cliche or weird, but it really is. Like you, sometimes you just have to say, look, it, it's okay. And finding somebody that inspires you, who you trust to re repeat back to you your truth of, yeah, it's okay, you're doing good. Like, this is part of the process, and that's so crucial. And that's something you've been doing for me that I really appreciate. Aww. And okay, even in my own life, I remember growing up, like I had zero maternal instinct. I didn't want to have kids, like I didn't like kids at all. And I have 19 nieces and nephews, okay? Like I've had plenty of exposure to children. But in me, there was this like fear, like I don't actually want kids. And so for me to face that and recognize that, and actually actually deal with that, that mm. was terrifying. 
for me to because that was out of the normal. I shouldn't I should be in this little box and this this change of not wanting to have kids. That's out here and that's not okay. And it, just facing the differences about ourselves, about our true feelings where we don't look like the way we feel like our parents think we should look or we feel like our boss thinks we should look or our neighbors think we should be. Facing that we're different and that we might be different from other people, that's really scary. Yes. But when you give yourself that permission, like, okay, I'm a freak and that's okay. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I just, in all different areas of my life, when I was able to face those difficult truths and just accept them, like, hey, I like having short hair and that's really weird, but that's me and I like it. Mm -hmm. Just being able to accept those differences really makes a difference yes. in, in every aspect of your life. Yeah. So have you ever had to deal with that with a client? I have. Um, most of my clients, I think, and, and for myself included, I think we go through this, especially when you're in business. So if you're an entrepreneur or a small business owner, you know that that level of understanding yourself and knowing who you are as a person and then understanding how to be a leader, right? If you have a team, if you have a staff, now it's not just your personality by yourself, it's your personality in front of a team of a dozen people, right? A lot of, that's a lot to put out there and to be seen. So it's really crucial that you're taking time for self-care and that you're taking time for silence and you're taking time to ask yourself to check in with yourself. Just, just small, it doesn't even have to be a big deal. It's just like, what's happening? How do I actually feel about this? And a great key that um, a coach and mentor of mine shared with me, uh, he told me, when you find yourself censoring yourself, like you knew that you wanted to say something, but you held that instinct back and you said something different instead. Like, you know how you said about the body language, like it's a sign to you that you need to go and look at it because you did something different than what you were saying. So when, if you ever find yourself not being open and honest, as, as open and honest as possible, um, just make a note of that and check in with yourself later. What was that about? Because not every situation you need to tell people what's on your mind all the time. Like I tend to do it because I'm, the worst rule breaker ever, <laughs> or the best rule breaker ever maybe. Uh, but you don't always have to do that, but it's a great sign to say, oh, I kind of held back there. I don't know if I meant to say, great, thanks. I'll see you next week, that's totally fine. Maybe I wanted to say something else, what was that about? So at least you're aware and you're not lying to yourself. And the first step to being honest in your life is to stop lying to yourself. Hmm. And that's sometimes the scariest thing to yes. do. You just want to kind of like, I'm so busy, I don't have time to deal with this right now. <laughs> All right, what Guilty. are some other, other steps you would give our audience just to kind of help them take the very first steps to figuring out what's going on and to start speaking? So once you kind of have a routine set up or, or a habit set up where you're checking in with yourself, get a journal, keep notes. You know, I have a different, this sounds funny, but I love systems and organization. I have a different journal for every kind of topic. So I've got like about four for different businesses and things that I'm running through my mind. And I just kind of jot it down. It helps to just get it outside of your, you sometimes because otherwise it's just in your brain and in your heart and in your emotions. And then it all stirs up and somebody will ask you a question and then it's like, wow, it all comes out. Or you'll be inspired and you'll go on social media and you'll do a post this long and it'll all be, and your customers will be like, well, that's a long post, I'm not gonna read that. And they'll keep scrolling, <laughs> right? And then we get so sad, like nobody likes my stuff. So if you're able to like just have a healthy habit of getting your thoughts outside of you onto paper, it's so, so helpful, so helpful. Mm, I think that also helps you clarify it as well. Yes. Where when you're thinking about it, it's like there's so much going on, but when you write it, you can only write one letter at a time. And so it really forces you to clarify and choose each word that comes next mm -hmm. and helps you to pin down what you're feeling and, and start at least writing your story, even if you're not ready to speak it yet. Yes. Yeah. For people who don't like writing, talk to somebody. Find a good friend, somebody to talk to, and just, you know, obviously you don't want to dump all your drama on them, but healthy a healthy conversation where you're like can I just be honest this is what I'm feeling and I don't need feedback I don't need you to fix it I really just need to tell somebody and you know find somebody you can trust to do that very helpful that's really powerful yeah now what are some of the other challenges you pe you think people will face when they start trying to get outside themselves mm. and speak their word well I'll ask you when you started putting yourself let's let's use social media for example when you started putting yourself out on social media for your business what were some of the things initially that you were freaked out about or that made you that triggered you <laughs> oh gosh let's see what didn't freak me out um, I know for me at first it was I had 
because I teach about body language, right? And body language, you can use that in police, teachers, students, job interviews, um, entrepreneurs, salespeople, public speakers, like basically everyone uses body language. For me, the difficult part was pinning it down to what I wanted to say. Mm. And I started by using like vague generalities, like body language is a great way to improve relationships and la da da and this and that. But instead of saying, body language will do exactly this result. Mm. I had a really hard time being specific. Mm -hmm. And I also had kind of a hard time being honest because not like I was lying about what body language does, but I was trying not to hurt people's feelings by telling them that they had awful body language that was pushing people away. Even though it was true, but I didn't know how to say that without hurting people's feelings. So I think there was that for me that I didn't know exactly what to say, but I also didn't know how to say what I had to say without hurting people. Mm, yes, yes. Okay, so be as honest and open as possible, right? But I'm going to add an addendum that, to that while still being kind. And that's a huge thing for me just because of how I am as a person. And I'm basically an anime character in <laughs> real life. <laughs> but like, you know, being, if you always do that caveat, like I'm trying to be open and honest, but I also really want to be kind. So how can I do all three? To me, that's a great medium to start with, to start trying to speak out the things that are in your mind. And you know, some people, they are naturally really good at this. I have some friends who are superb, and I listened to them talk, and I was like, wow, that was a really nice response, but it was so true to you, and so direct, but still so loving. You know, like, I'm, I'm still always looking for ways to better it. So it's like body language. You're not going to solve speaking your word overnight. You're not going to solve body language overnight, but it's just little steps, little things that you can do to get you closer to where you want to be. I love that. I love that so much. Now, we are running out of time, but is there any, where can people go to talk to you if what you've said has really resonated with them? How can they find you? You can find me on social media. So if you go to Speak Your Word, if you search for that on Facebook, that's mainly where I hang out. Facebook. Speak your word on Facebook. Yes. Good to know. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you for Thank being Thank you so guest. much for having me. It's been so fun. Awesome. Now, viewers, I know you're getting ready for the holidays. You're getting ready to spend time with your family. Or maybe you're getting ready to sit at home with your cat. No judgment. I love cats. Just know that here at ThinkTech, we are thinking of you. We are hoping you're having a wonderful December season. And I just want you to have an awesome day. So see you later, guys. This is OC16 Think Tech. I'll be here next Thursday. Out of the comfort zone, I'm your host, R.B. Kelly. Merry Christmas.